Hello everyone. In today's presentation, I'm going to talk about my work which is titled Inesthetic Perceptual Symmetry in Bimanual Interactions, an exploratory study. I am Ranak Mohanty, representing the Mix Initiative Design Lab alongside my co-authors Riddhi and Dr. Krishnamurthy. So what is kinesthetic perceptual symmetry? Kinesthetic perceptual symmetry as seen from the point of physical actions is where symmetric tendency in bimanual movements is independent of muscular and motoric constraints and is thus purely perceptual in nature. This originates from a common misconception that symmetry exists only in our actions. That too when muscles or joints placed symmetrically are activated together. But the true reason, as past researchers have found out, is that our brain is where we perceive symmetry of any form, may it be visual, audio, and kinesthetic. The key question here that is yet to be answered is if we can stimulate symmetry in our brain using kinesthetic feedback. An example of perceptual symmetry in kinesthetic as well as the visual domain can be seen in the middle box therapy as discovered by Dr. V.S. Ramachandran, which also inspires our current work. Generally, people who have had amputation surgeries are known to experience pain on the amputated side. To describe this pain as shooting, stabbing and other adjectives of the same severity. However, the problem is that there is no limb physically present to experience that pain and therefore they cannot do anything to alleviate it. In medical terminology, this is called as a phantom limb pain and the middle box therapy goes the neuropsychology way to alleviate it. One answer might be that the brain is sending signals to the arm uh, and trying to clench it, but in you and me, uh, there's messages going back from the muscles of the hand telling you you're clenching too much or too fast. And this damps the, the command signals, so you can, you can slow down. But the patient has no feedback, because he doesn't have an arm. So the brain says, send even more signals, okay? And this goes on, you get into a sort of positive feedback loop. So I said, well, if you give him some, some other source of feedback, such as visual feedback, maybe that'll trick the brain into thinking that the hand is clenching or unclenching, and maybe you can interrupt this loop. So I said, well, why don't we put a mirror there, and have James look inside the mirror. So it's as though you have visually resurrected the phantom limb. And of course, the patient knows it's an illusion, but it's very, very compelling. Here we see that the visual feedback is used to trick the brain into perceiving the motor symmetry even with the limb being absent, thus confirming that humans perceive symmetry in the mind and not the muscles or joints of their body. Kinesthetic perception originates from the sensations experienced in muscles, tendons and joints. It has primarily been studied for evaluating body alignment with the true vertical using visual, vestibular and proprioceptive cues. In recent times, people have also studied kinesthetic perception from the point of interaction design in augmented and virtual reality. Using kinesthetic perception, past research has also shown the existence of symmetry in the somatosensory region of the brain. Studies conducted by Mexler et al. discuss how asymmetric actions performed voluntarily or involuntarily allude eventually to symmetric motions as directed by the brain and not vice versa. Similar results were also discussed by Wasaka et al where a mirror is introduced between two asymmetric hand motions which disrupts the neural activity and involuntarily the actions become symmetric sim similar to what we saw in the mirrored box therapy. Malabit et al. discusses three types of kinesthetic symmetry as they explore for robot-based rehabilitation. They particularly emphasize on joint space symmetry which can be described as a mirrored motion of the body, for example our arms about the shoulder joint, which they found to be effective for neurophysical therapy. We have also seen kinesthetic perceptual symmetry being explored for rehabilitation in stroke patients using robotics as well as virtual reality. While prior works have discussed the existence of kinesthetic perceptual symmetry in our daily actions, it is primarily in a qualitative sense. The research question that we are trying to answer in our work is, is there perceptual symmetry in kinesthetic feedback and to what extent can we identify it? Therefore, we conduct a very simple experiment. Our setup consists of two geometric touch haptic devices capable of providing a maximum of 3 newtons worth of force feedback per device. These devices have styli which we repurpose through software such that the stylus tips represent two ends of a virtual screen whose stretching action is based on the joint space symmetry of the shoulder as well as the elbows. And a spring based force feedback is experienced on both hands through the styli when the virtual spring is stretched from its natural length. In a physical setup, we added a visual reference to maintain as linear as possible stretching of the, of the string. We found through our pilot studies that people found it easier to maintain a linear motion when provided with a visual reference. We designed three lines of 28 centimeters each at different heights based to serve different user anatomies as observed during the pilot trials. Secondly, the pose in which a person holds the styli is designed to minimize the torque that could have been experienced if the styli were held at an angle to the longitudinal axis of the virtual spring. Our goal in this experiment is to explore the perceptual aspect of kinesthetic feedback in bimanual symmetric actions. For our user study, we recruited 14 healthy participants who were graduate and undergraduate students. Out of all, 13 had their right hand as a dominant hand and only one had their left hand as dominant. 
It has been found that people use their dominant hand for better spatial reasoning and control, and we wanted to observe if it altered the experimental results. This user study was a within subjects experiment where each participant performed the spring pulling task for, for four different experimental controls. First is where the force feedback is active on both devices. Second is where we set the spring stiffness to zero and there is no force feedback. Third is where the device only on the user's dominant hand is on. And fourth is where the device only on the user's non-dominant hand is on. In the last two cases, the force feedback is similar to the spring having its one end fixed. We first conducted a pilot study to decide upon the spring stiffness values where we arbitrarily tested stiffness values from 0 to 9 Newton per meters for all control groups and identified a stiffness value of 5 as the maximum stiffness for which the participants couldn't differentiate between asymmetric forces on both hands and a stiffness value of 9 as the minimum stiffness for which they could clearly differentiate between asymmetric forces on both of their hands. During the task, the participants were asked to notify when they felt asymmetric forces that is unequal forces on either hands, else they were asked to extend until the end of the visual reference slides which also represents the maximum stretch of the virtual spring. Each study took about 30 minutes and began with a preliminary questionnaire focusing on the participants being healthy, which means that their hands didn't have any sort of physical impairment. Each trial took about 3 to 4 seconds and were randomized. The study was concluded by an open-ended interview questions to gauge user feedback. For each trial, we collected the spring length at which asymmetry was identified, the value of stiffness used for that particular trial, using which we compute the force vector for the given experimental condition, and finally, the time the participants took to perceive asymmetry of forces in their hand. We conduct two data comparisons and the results are as follows. Our first comparison is within different experimental controls for the given stiffness value. This is our null and alternate hypothesis. The both devices on condition is taken as the ground truth and a pairwise ANOVA comparison is done with the other three conditions. For the stiffness value 5, we observed that on an average, it took a significantly longer pull, let's say about 4 to 5 centimeters, more to identify asymmetry with respect to the ground crew and that times almost the entire spring length in the both-off condition. For stiffness value 6 and 7, conditions where force was applied to only one hand were found to have asymmetry identified at the shorter spring lengths with respect to the ground crew of about 5 to 6 cm less on an average. Again, for stiffness values 8 and 9, we observed a significantly larger pull to identify any asymmetry in the both devices off condition, which means that the participants maintain symmetry even in the absence of force. Our second comparison is within different stiffness values for a given experiment condition. This is our null and our alternate hypothesis. We conducted a multiple comparison ANOVA test but couldn't find any significant differences in spring lengths for different stiffnesses across different control groups. However, for both devices on and both devices off condition, participants pulled for longer lengths for about 23 centimeters on an average to identify any asymmetry. Again, confirming presence of symmetric motions both in presence and absence of force, which is an interesting phenomenon. Also, the single device active conditions made it relatively easier to perceive kinesthetic asymmetry at lower forces across all stiffness values. Our objective in this work was to quantify kinesthetic perceptual symmetry in bimanual actions and here are some key takeaways from our work. We observed that participants maintain symmetry in both absence and presence of force feedback, which can be concluded to say that, in addition to other senses, kinesthetic perceptual symmetry is also ingrained in human brain with or without a kinesthetic feedback. While this is true, we observed that it was relatively easy to identify asymmetry in conditions where kinesthetic feedback was applied to either hands and for average forces as low as 1 newton to 1.6 newtons. On the contrary, for when forces on both hands were active, perceptual symmetry is actually preserved for average forces between 0.8 to 1.5 newtons. We also observed that the dominant hand was deemed crucial by the participants to perceive asymmetry in forces. But it also ended up creating false positives for higher stiffness range in both on condition, making the user falsely perceive asymmetry in the force feedback. Our work is an exploratory study towards quantifying kinesthetic perceptual symmetry, but it comes with a few limitations. We collected data only for healthy patients, and uh, we look forward to conduct the same experiments with patients having sensory motor disabilities. In this work, we focus only on the haptics data. Since we are talking about perceptual symmetry in the brain, we could also look into EEG data in the future. Currently, we explored only one task which was pulling a virtual spring, but we could also explore different joint space symmetries in different directions for tasks like weightlifting and pull-up bars. Since our initial results present a promising avenue for newer research problems, we believe that this exploratory study could help us create perceptual models for healthy individuals, then repeat the same studies with people having sensory motor disorders, conduct a comparison between healthy and disabled individuals, and use this knowledge towards new rehabilitative and sensory motor corrective measures. Thank you for attending this presentation. You can find more details about this paper on our lab website. And if you are interested in learning about more interesting research in our area, please visit the website. Thank you.